Yeah, just in line with all of that, the offense. I think we knew, I thought we knew more about Staley and this defense. And I think we kind of get where they're at and where they were going to be and where they're headed. But Joe Lombardi was such a big question mark. Everyone talking about, oh, you know, he's the guy from Detroit who looked like this and threw too many screen passes. They went very good. Stafford, you know, numbers, whatever, were down or something like that. So what does this guy look like in this new team? Well, I mean, he was dealing outside of the red zone, which I think, you know, we could talk about some of the issues there. But, you know, he started seven of eight passing on first down, finished 16 passes and seven runs on first down. He targeted uh, nine different, or he had Herbert target nine different players in the passing game. Um, six players averaged 10 or more yards per reception. They had 424 total yards. Um, they held the ball for about two thirds of the game on offense. Yeah. They were 14 of 13 or 14 of 19 on third down. He finally got to see Eckler line up out wide and in the slot five times out wide one in the slot. And, you know, if you get stuck too much on, say, Keenan Allen, right, and you watch the Bills game from last year, or even the Patriots game from last year, and they cover Keenan Allen, Herbert's like, uh, I'll just keep targeting him because I don't know what this game plan is. <laughs> what are we doing? But by spreading the ball around, like Lombardi did in this game, and of course, Herbert threw it, you create opportunities for your other players to get open because everyone has to be respected and everyone was fed in this game. And it's really just the start of where this offense is going to be. So uh, to me, the biggest takeaway was Joe Lombardi is much better than what he was at Detroit. And I can't wait to see how this offense evolves moving forward, especially with such a dominant offensive line. Yeah, man, it, it, he was awesome today. You know, they mix it up quite a bit, whether, like I said, you know, quick game, intermediate shots, and, and really all of that stuff. And the third down performance specifically mm -hmm. was crazy good today. And, you know, all we've heard so far this summer is that, oh, Justin Herbert can't keep this up. The Chargers can't keep this up. And Daniel Popper wrote this. So I want to read it to make sure I get it right. Um, Justin Herbert today was just the fifth quarterback in the NFL since 1991 to convert 12 or more third downs through the air in one single game. Mm. Think about how many quarterbacks <laughs> have played games in the yeah. NFL since 1991. And then the Chargers converted 73 0.68% of their third downs into first downs. Mm. That is the highest rate among any NFL team since 1991. Like the third down efficiency today was crazy. Yeah. And again, like they were moving the ball at will essentially. And normally you're probably not going to have, you know, 19 third down chances just sure. kind of depending on, on what you're doing. But man, like the third down offense today was crazy. You know, we were clamoring last year for this team to be better on first down. Let Justin Herbert have more opportunities. And, you know, Joe Lombardi follows the analytics. Like, that, that is the the clear yep. takeaway from Lombardi. He's going to let Justin Herbert in this offense be, be, you know, kind of airing it out on first down. And most of the play calls worked. So yeah. it was it was really great to see what Joe Lombardi did today. Yeah, and I feel like this is kind of one of those games where it was going to be harder to do that, like against this Washington mm -hmm. football team defense, which you yeah. know, held them to 20 points. Um, and in the next couple of weeks, you know, you'll get to play Dallas, which is an opportunity to air the ball out, uh, at least more so than the Washington football team. And Kansas City is not exactly stout on defense either. Obviously, they have a great offense. So I think that you kind of even get to have a little bit more margin for error and, a little, you know, an ability to take more chances in the coming weeks. Yeah, absolutely. So I think my biggest takeaway, it's Rashawn Slater. It Heck has yeah, to be wait, Rashawn I'm Slater. For this, man. Like I, we talked all week about this Washington defensive front. Um, I missed on the Kyler Fackrell thing. But the reason I said that I felt like Kyler Fackrell was going to have a better game was because of Rashawn Slater. Mm -hmm. And Rashawn Slater was so good against Chase Young that they altered their game plan. Chase Young took like 80% <laughs> of his snaps against the left tackles last season, mm -hmm. and he was going against Bulaga and Norton the entire day. They said, you're not yep. going against Slater anymore. You're going on the opposite side. So I know that, you know, me, I was like looking at Rashawn Slater in the 2020 lens or 2020, 21 lens of mm -hmm. looking at like, okay, he didn't play last year. You know, there has, there was some concerns, some concerns about his, you know, lack of arm length. So I was kind of picturing like a good season for Rashawn Slater, but like a season where he would take some lumps and like, you know, take a little bit to adjust to game speed, but he was 
awesome today. And I haven't watched the film. I, I'm hoping that All-22 is back for this week to be able to watch him. Uh, Arjun tells us that he gave up zero pressures, folks. Mm. Zero against Chase Young and Montez Sweat. Like, we have a stud left tackle. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but somehow we managed to land a franchise quarterback and a franchise left tackle in back-to-back -back classes. And, man, Oof. Rashawn Slater was so, so good today. And that is my biggest takeaway. I really hope this gets some attention. It won't because it's the Chargers and it's Washington <laughs> right. football team and Heineke played. But, man, last year I really feel like everyone really started talking about Tristan Wirfs the day that he basically shot down Joey Bosa. Now, yeah. he, Joey Bosa had three injuries going into that game, but still, shutting down Joey Bosa is a big deal. Slater walking out and shutting down whoever was across from him like it was nothing, no problem at all. Oh, man, I really, like, I think Wirfs was, what, 82 on the NFL Top 100? I hope yeah. to see Slater up there as well. If he can continue this, make that potential first-team All-Pro, second-team All-Pro, whatever. Point is, he protected Herbert today better than any left tackle performance I can remember <laughs> in such a long time. Yeah. And it wasn't like an accident. It wasn't like, oh, he had a good game, but it's the outlier. Like, this right. is the expectation moving forward. His first game against whoever was across from him on a great defense where, like, three guys had 35 or more pressures last season. <laughs> three, and they think – or. Four had 30 or more. Four, had, yeah. Yeah. And then three had 40 or more. It was like, eh, you know, whatever. Like, I've just, I, didn't, I haven't played a game in forever. I kind of got some back issues, whatever. Let's go. Shut them down. No problem. I cannot wait to watch the film. I can't wait to watch your film breakdown. The yeah. moment I saw Arjun send us that, that he had zero pressures, I just, Steven, I just think <laughs> of you in those moments, man. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, and we kind of needed this. We all really liked yeah. Slater a lot. Yeah. Like, Rash like, the Chargers needed the shirt, but we needed this because. Rashawn Slater is a guy we freaking loved and everybody liked him. At worst, he was like OT2 or something like that. But man, it just feels so good having him out there. Instead, like, look, the other first round wide receivers that played, they did very well. Alex and his Eagles can speak to that. But boy, right. I can't imagine going into the season with, and with Chase Young lined up against, I don't know, Trey Pipkins or Liam Eichenberg or something. But no, we got Slater. And for that, we get zero pressures. Oh, perfection. It's just so great to hear number 79 is reporting as eligible as an extra blocker <laughs> and not the primary left tackle. And we should keep it that way for as long as humanity exists. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, th that was just so great to see that Slater performance. Um, he, he was really dominant and it, it just gives you, you know, hope like obviously yeah. we don't know what's going to be Balaga status this week. That's going to be something that's going to be up in the air. Um, but it, it sort of is like, hey, if you have at least one of those tackle spots filled out by a guy that you know is legit, then the rest of it kind of comes easy, right? And then you have Corey Lindsley and you have uh, everybody else, like Filer and Abushi mm -hmm. played pretty well today too. Yeah. Um, so you really got, even if you have Norton, four out of those five uh, guys there. Uh, so uh, I think, and he played well today against Chase Young. The first play against Chase Young, he bounces off of him. That's crazy. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I I thought Slater was super fun to see, and I don't uh, I, I don't really see any. Well, I don't think he's gonna get the worst kind of recognition yet. <laughs> I hope right. he does, and we'll see him yeah. on the NFL top one hundred. But you know, th this is a start. I mean, this is the best possible start he could have had. I was worried going into this game about what the cohesion of the offensive line would be, and you know, Herbert not playing the preseason and all that kind of stuff. And Joe Lombardi told me to uh, shove it. 